So two running backs did get the franchise tag already placed on them. You said Josh Jacobs, no surprise there. After they didn't pick up his fifth-year option, he ultimately gets the franchise tag. Funny how it works out. And the Cowboys franchise tag Tony Pollard, which could have an interesting trickle effect on yeah. Zeke. And now maybe the Cowboys out of the whole B. John Robinson discussion with the draft. Um, this is the best way, honestly, if you don't want, if you want to avoid that long-term guarantee to a running back because all the risk that comes at the position. I just have to read this tweet. The guy I follow on uh, Twitter, his name's uh, uh, Jeff Crisco, and he's like a fantasy writer. Um, anyway, but he just tweeted, the Raiders turning down the fifth year, then franchise tagging Josh Jacobs after running Derek Carr out of town with no backup plan, all after leveraging their future to get Devontae Adams, tells you exactly what you need to know. Which I thought, that's, you know, <laughs> it's one way of putting it. It's a good it. point. Yep. I mean, yep. Like, you know, spot the lie. Like, I mean, it, like. It's going to run into the maze. I mean, yeah. it is a little, it is a little crazy. I, you know, there is a new regime, you know, but still, like, I mean, it, it is a good point. They turned down the fifth year option on Josh <laughs> Jacobs, but then turned around and had to franchise tag him. They did run Derek Carr out of town. They don't have, at least as far as we know, a plan beyond Jarrett Stidham at quarterback. No. You know, they did, you know, pay through the nose to get Devontae Adams there. It's It does seem like a, a franchise without a direction. Yes, and the Jacobs thing is makes total sense. Jacobs is the best running back in football, yeah. I think, along with McCaffrey, He's one of them, yeah. depending uh, how you value those two guys as we look at the tweet from uh, Matthew's man, Jeff Crisco. Uh, I think that... Yeah, with Jacobs, I mean, he's going to be, what, top three fantasy pick? Top four yeah. fantasy pick uh, going into the next season? Same circumstances, we'll see what happens with the quarterback. But, I mean, as unknown as Stidham is, I'm not sure that whoever they put out is going to be a lot worse than Derek Carr was yeah. last year. Stidham actually did not look terrible the last two games. You he, know lit I mean? like he, 40, he lit up the 49ers. He lit up the 49ers, 100%. And then, of course, you have Tony Pollard yep. here, who also gets the franchise tag. It would have been pretty hard for the Cowboys to just let him get to free agency. But how much running back can you allocate? How much money can you allocate to your running backs? Now Pollard's at a high cap hit, and we know Zeke makes a lot of money as well. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I think Zeke is either going to get released or have to restructure his deal to come back to the Cowboys. He's he's been public about the fact that he's open to restructuring his contract as well. I think they, my guess is that gets done. But if Ezekiel Elliott were to leave, Tony Pollard. You could make an argument that Tony Pollard is the number three running back in fantasy, right? You know that, sure. right? You know, I mean, like, yeah. you know, after after McCaffrey and like Eckler, yeah. Like, I mean, He'd honestly, right, you could, Jacobs. right, yep. right. And if somebody combo. took and if somebody took Pollard number one overall, given the injury concerns on on McCaffrey, and if you were worried that Eckler's touchdowns might come back a little bit with Kellen Moore now calling the plays in uh, in, in L. A. Like, I wouldn't. If Ezekiel Elliott's not there and somebody drafted Tony Pollard number one overall, I wouldn't be like, what are you doing? Yeah, like would, It's not where I would rank him, but I think that's not a crazy thing to do. I would like argue he's that, that good. particularly with the way that McCaffrey is utilized in the San Francisco offense, the fact that they bring in other guys as well to spell McCaffrey, I would say that Pollard probably has the highest ceiling of any running back in fantasy if Zeke isn't there. Yeah, if Zeke isn't there, that's the big if. So we'll wait to see what happens. But my feeling is, is that he will. Yeah. Like... He, Jerry loves him. Dallas loves him because he's willing to be like, yeah, I already made. Just want to be here, you know? Yeah. Right? I've, he's made whatever ninety million, a hundred, whatever crazy number he's made already. Based on that contract, you could see them getting something done. One last franchise tag, and it was put on Evan Ingram, eleven point three five million to stay with the Jaguars. I think this is the best case scenario fantasy wise for Evan Ingram. When you look at his util utilization under Doug Peterson, staying with Trevor Lawrence, we saw a comfort level with Evan Ingram last year that was real breakout and great to see. By the way, good for Evan Ingram. He took a one-year prove-it deal. Yeah. He proved it's less it. than this number, right? Yeah. He, you know, he proved it. He gets franchise tag, which I don't think he was wanting. He was hoping yeah, the franchise tag. About it. Right. <laughs> the franchise tag number is lower for tight ends in a lot of cases. But I agree. This is good news for Trevor Lawrence. It's good news for the fantasy value of Evan Ingram, who finished his tight end seven last year on a points per game basis, top five overall. He stayed healthy all year, which is great. And then you think about, which leads us to the next thing here, Connor, but you think about this this Jaguars offense in year two under Doug, yeah. Doug Peterson, another year removed from the Urban Meyer disaster. Trevor Lawrence, now with Christian Kirk, now with Zay Jones, Evan Ingram back, and they just get Calvin Ridley reinstated. Mm. Tra Travis Etienne, a year removed from his injury as well. Like, the Jaguars offense is going to be fun. 
And you got to feel like they're the favorites in the South. They're minus 150. Wow. I bet MGM yeah. to win the AFC South. They're just kind of crazy because it's the Jags. But at the same time, like, how can you really argue with that? They have so much more talent than every team in that division. They are set on offense at skill positions. They may retool the offensive line a little bit, but now they're just rebuilding that defense. And this is a really, really good team. So that number doesn't surprise me. My expectation is in, in free agency and in the draft, they will go fairly heavy on defense, which makes a ton of sense. I agree with you. Maybe fortify the offensive line yep. uh, a, a little bit as well. But, you know, that offense was really good last year. I think second year in the system, it'll be even better. And then you add Calvin Ridley, whatever they get from Calvin Ridley, which, you know, wide range of outcomes there for Ridley. It's been a long time since we've seen him um, in a game. I believe October of 2021 was the last time he played. But, you know, still 28 years old, still a guy that, you know, when he was playing was one of the top five wide receivers in the NFL. As you see the numbers there on your screen for Calvin Ridley, you know, he was, you know, he was, he was awesome. Yeah, and Trevor Lawrence as well uh, has as much upside as anyone, basically. And you, like, it would not be shocking to see Trevor Lawrence, you know, he'd be top three in MVP. That wouldn't surprise me at all. He's, he's going to be third year. He's a generational prospect, led his team to the playoffs already. Connor, one for you. The Indianapolis Colts came into last season like minus 120 to win the AFC South, and they obviously have a disaster season. Now they're plus 700. Is there any quarterback they could draft that makes them relevant again? Because the defense yeah. is really solid. Uh, they'll get Jonathan Taylor back. Michael Pittman's still there. The offensive line should be better. Is there any quarterback who can help them this year? There's two, Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud. They're ready to roll. I, I don't have worries about them adjusting to the NFL level, and that division does not scare me. So I... If you're going to play those odds, do it now because the Colts are moving up from four in this draft, yep. I would think. Whether that's three, whether that's one, we could see the Bears do a trade where they go to two and then to four. The Colts are going up in this draft to get a quarterback, and I think it's one of those two players. There's a chance it's one of those two players where they're ready to roll this year. Yep. So it's a great point. I think if I'm the Colts, I want – and this – I listen, I know this goes against conventional wisdom. Uh, give me Stroud over Bryce Young. Give me C.J. Stroud over Bryce Young. I am telling you. Again, huh? not, I, I've stood next to Bryce Young. <laughs> I've stood next to Bryce Young. I'm bigger than Bryce Young. Mm -hmm. I, I, and, like, it's I get scary. it. It's he's, scary. I, I get it. He is fast. He is accurate. But he's not he's that got, fast. I will say right? that. That's the thing. Like, he's not, yeah. like, RG3 fast. You no, know what I mean? No, no, like, no, no, no. I, That's what I'm saying. And, like, like guys that are that and, – and, like, people are like, well, what about Kyler Murray? And I'm like, okay, but, like, Kyler Murray's thick. You know what I mean? Like, yes, Kyler Murray is short for an NFL quarterback, but he's also, like, thick. He's also faster than Bryce Young. I mean, Kyler Murray's yes. got, a, got a gear that just Bryce Young does not have. And, like, you get it. He's probably going to be awesome, and he was awesome at Alabama. And I met him, and, like, I thought he was the nicest kid. Like, he's a great kid. So I'm not trying to, like, you know, but I'm just – the NFL's a physical game, and I'm just yep. – again, I'm six foot, 200 pounds. Um, and – you know, listen, a lot of dad bod going on here, but I am I am six foot two hundred pounds and I'm telling you, I stood next to him and I am bigger than him. Well yeah, he came two oh four, right? <laughs> but he came in at five ten and an eighth, I think. So. He came in at five ten and eight, but like two oh four, so yeah. he bulked up or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. pretty had a big fake way. You know, he, had, had a, he didn't play at two oh four, I'll say that. Yeah. Great player. We just don't know how that's sustainable because of the the frame. Well, it's minus 190 to go number one overall. I'm, I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will. And, like, I, I hope the kid has a great NFL career, and I hope he's awesome. I'm just – I would – if I was – C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud. I like it. Give me C.J. Stroud. Building a condo. Let's stay in that division because the report came out from Mike Silver uh, with the Titans that they are shopping Derrick Henry. The Titans, we've kind of played this game with them. Will they, won't they tear down? We've heard now Bud Dupree, a couple of cuts here and there. This takes to another level. If you're talking about trading Derrick Henry, this is a totally different level. Well, what it does is it completely changes their offense. I mean, like, you know, the, the, the challenge the Titans have is that Derrick Henry is one of the best running backs in the NFL, but unfortunately he doesn't give you a ton in the passing game. And so the way that you have to run an offense that's centered around Derrick Henry is he needs the ball 25 times yeah. a game. And if your offensive line is banged up, if they're getting beaten in the trenches, if it's just – if game script is going negatively your way, you're sort of – stuck because you have to just keep running like he just he's not he's incredibly talented but he's not super versatile and so um yeah I mean it'll be interesting to see you know I, I know there was concern coming into last year about well you know coming off of the injury he's had so much crazy usage can he still be a fantasy factor and the answer is like yes he was a top five fantasy uh running back 
He was fourth in both total points and points per game. He actually had 33 receptions, so he wasn't a zero in the passing game. But, yeah, I mean, it was just he's one-dimensional. It's an awesome dimension. But it's, he's one-dimensional, really. Yeah, I didn't believe in Henry at all coming into this season just based on the workload and the history of guys who have that workload. Like, guys just don't do what Derrick yeah. Henry has done in terms of the amount of carries, the amount of wear on his body, the fact that he's coming off a broken foot, and the fact that he was able to do what he did. I mean, he wasn't that efficient, 4.4 yards per carry, but they also had no threat in the passing game, and he was their offense. But, I mean, take out the Texans games, where, which he does every year yes. with 200 yards yeah. and two touchdowns. Texans merch. He didn't finish the season that strong. He had a really good stretch. Uh, in the middle, so I would probably be wanting to get out of the Derrick Henry business um, because he is, he's going to turn 30 next year as well and the track record for running backs at that age. At the same time, on Radio Row, I walked past Derrick Henry and he is built like a human being I've never seen in my life. Yeah. So maybe the again, rules of science again, just don't apply. Again, just as we talk about, and I, I've said this before, but we, you know, we talk about you know Bryce Young, whatever. Again, I'm six foot, 200 pounds. I felt tiny next to Derrick Henry. I've stood next to him as well. I took He's a picture with him. Ridiculous. He's a massive it's human being. It is one of those things where you're just like, how do you and I have the same DNA yes. on some level? Mm. Like, how are you and I the same species? Because it yes. doesn't feel like we should be. And um, so he's, I mean, he's, he is, you know, he is, he is the definition of a full-grown man. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, like, but to your point, who's willing to offer the Titans uh, you know, for a 30-year running, 30-year-old running back, again, he had 33 receptions. So okay, so maybe you can unlock a little bit more of the passing game usage. But like, for a 30-year-old running back who's had at least 380 touches two of the last three years, and suffered a major injury in one of those one of the last three seasons, right? So a 30-year-old running, 30-year-old running back that's got that kind of usage, that is fairly one-dimensional. How much are you going to give up to acquire that player? Yeah, not much. And then the question, right? So. If you're like, you're willing to give up something, but you're not going to give up a lot. And then if you're the Titans, like, well, okay, he is at the moment our offensive identity. Are we trading away our offensive identity for a third rounder or whatever it is? Like, you know, like, I, I, I don't know. You know, I, I, it's a really interesting one. Um, what's clear is, is that Robert Woods is no longer on the team. This is going to be, in terms of the passing game, it's going to be, it's going to be Traylon Burks. It's going to be my, my guy, Chig Conquo. Um, and it's going to be Ryan Tannehill. It doesn't look like Malik Willis is ready for prime time. Looks like it'll be Ryan Tannehill at least for one more year. Tennessee isn't going to draft early enough to draft yeah. a quarterback this year. They'd have to go so up. They're yeah. going to either have to trade up, and that doesn't feel like that's what that organization line. does. But they do have a new general manager, so we'll see. But the, you know, I mean, that's the other thing, right? It's, so it's a, you know, John Robinson's no longer there. So do they, the new, you know. Um, you know, um, is it Carthon or Kathon? How do I ran Ran Carthon. Ran Carthon. Yep. Um, uh, so you know, does Carthon say like, "Hey, I'm looking around. You know what? I got to tear this down. I've got, yeah. I've got, I've got some leash here because I've just got hired to, you know, to build something, and I understand, you know, what it takes to build. You know, when they got to San Francisco, him and that, you know, that whole regime, it took them a little while. Um, so it's really interesting. Yeah. Last really thing, interesting. last thing on Henry, when what doesn't show up in the box score with him is just his gravity because he gets faces stack boxes you have to yeah. stack the box against him and it makes their passing game so much better Tannehill has been amazing off of play action since yep. coming yes. to Tennessee and if you lose Derrick Henry you lose that Henry going will make Tannehill worse so that is just another thing there in terms of their identity yeah, Ta yeah. yeah we, we would see who you know it, we'll see you know is it Hassan Haskins I don't know yeah. who would be the who would be the guy there my guess is that if Derrick Henry leaves the starting running back for the Titans next year is not on their team right yep. now Tennessee would save $6.3 million on their cap if they traded him. So not massive savings, just a little bit there. One more running back that this one will yeah, be that's on the about move. If you trade him, that's about like we're just tearing it down. We need yes. to re-identify re re what we'll we are. We'll take a mid-round asset, take the $6 million, start to reset yeah. to a ground floor. The Bucks will release Leonard Fournette. Fournette's quote was, I asked after the season to be released. They respected my wishes, so no bad blood. He turned 28. This offseason, for net aside, is it Rashad White time in Tampa, and, and what yeah, does that look like? I think so. I mean, like, he looked really good last year. Um, you know, he had five different games with 15 or more touches, averaged 13.6 fantasy points per game, really good in the passing game, 50 receptions last year as well. The two games where he got 20 touches, touch it. The two games where he got 20 touches, he had over 100 yards from scrimmage. So, um, you know, I, talented player going to get an opportunity it's going to be a bad team but volume should be there for Rashad White they'll bring in some veteran but 
feels like this is going to be the Rashad White show. If you're the Buccaneers, you have to go to a youth movement at this point. Yeah, maybe the weirdest team in the league right now. Like Because just the mix of having all this skill position talent in Evans, Goldwyn, yep. White, and then having Kyle Trask as your incumbent quarterback, it's just a bit of a mess. That team is going to look a lot different. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if... Uh, you do wonder if they're like so they released Leonard Fournette, which makes sense, and he'll sign somewhere and he'll be he'll be fantasy relevant. We'll talk about that. But I wonder if they get rid of Godwin or Evans. Like again, like again, if they're going for a full rebuild, it doesn't make sense. You, like you could get especially when you think about this year, where the free agent market for wide receivers is fairly poor and the draft class for wide receivers is really yeah. poor. It doesn't have that top dog right, right now. Yeah, so. so I mean that just like there's going to be some wide receiver needy teams out there, and you're just like, hey, Tampa, you know, yeah, well, you, want a, you want a one or a two for Mike Evans or for Chris Godwin? Like, if I'm Tampa Bay, I'm thinking really hard about that. Yeah, particularly because Tampa Bay are not a team that's Jimmy Garoppolo away from contending. Like, they, no. they would, I mean, I think the Saints were probably better than the Bucs by the end of last season, just the way those two teams were trending anyway. And now the Saints have Derek Carr and the Bucs lose Tom Brady. So that team, you would think, would be primed for a rebuild. In Tampa, they've been a team that we've seen B. John Robinson uh, go to in a lot of mock drafts, and Rashad White's thoughts on that uh, scenario was, I don't have no problem with B. John. It's a business. We all know that. Tampa Bay has to do what's best for Tampa Bay. My coaches have to do what's best for my coaches. Everybody has a little selfishness in them. You have to. Me, I'm selfless. You can draft B. John. You can draft whoever. At the end of the day, I'm going to win that job. That's just what I've always done. Huh? I, uh, I love that quote. Bijan Robinson would be a weird draft pick to me for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Like Rebuilding I, with a running back in the first round yeah. is not a sound strategy. The, the Bills make sense to me. The Eagles make sense to yep. me. Like The Bengals, if the Mixon situation just gets yes. totally off the rails, maybe. Yep. Maybe. I could see that as well. Yeah. I, exactly. Mixon in the news again. It's just, you know, yeah. so we'll see. And there's a cap hit there that... So, yeah, I think there's a scenario in which Joe Mixon's no longer in the Bagels um, uh, in the future. But, yeah, to me, that's what it feels like. A, a team that could use a, you know, listen, listen, if Saquon leaves, I could see the Giants doing it, right? Sure. You know, like, so. What if Chicago gets 8 million picks from a double trade and they're like, we'll just take a great player for Justin Fields? Yeah, and look, I mean, we're heading into our combine buzz, and one of the things that we're not going to get to, but I will tell you, is that I heard that, you know, unless David Montgomery is willing to take a cap-friendly deal, a team-friendly deal, he's, you know, he's likely played his last game as a Chicago Bear. So we'll see how that plays out. But who knows what Montgomery wants. So, yeah, you could certainly see, you know, hey, we need playmakers for Justin Fields, and Robinson would certainly qualify. Okay. I think they need more wide receivers. But, again, yeah, it's a poor do. wide receiver class. So they may say, you know, there's no wide receivers out there. We're just going to we're gonna run the ball. We've got Justin Fields. We've got Khalil Herbert we like. We also get – kid like Bijan Robinson or another young running back and we're just gonna yeah. we're gonna play you know we're gonna play Bears football good defense and run the ball yep hey it's Matthew Barry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going so either way thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen and now I'd like to ask you respectfully 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 okay respectfully Please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.